All right, then. Um, it is 7.30. We'll start on time. Um, we would like to welcome you to our um, Zoom club meeting um, to um, discuss the section manager election. Um, the format tonight will not be a debate. We will allow the candidates time to introduce themselves and we will then pose questions that have been submitted, submitted by members. Each candidate will be allowed time to answer the question with time for additional comments after each response. Um, they will be muted, so there will be no interrupting each other. Um, um, each candidate will, um, we hope to hold the meeting to an hour. I will try not to cut anyone off, but we'll suggest we move on if we've been spending too much time on one so topic. If you have a question, please include it in the chat function and we will include it as best we can. So, um, we didn't do a coin, co coin toss. So, um, um, I'll just pick Pat to go ahead and start. You okay with that, Pat? Just unmute yourself. Thanks, Craig. Much appreciated. Um, well, first, I want to say uh, thank you for having us here. I am glad to see the Davis County Amateur Radio Club uh, pioneer the need for a platform such as this that benefits the section as a whole. Uh, Mel and I have worked together as members of the corporation that did the section's Great Salt Lake Ham Fest in Sandy a few years ago. Um, back uh, more recent, uh, the Division Ham Fest in Ogden with good results. Um, Mel is president of the very successful Utah VHF Society, uh, proudly points out that the Utah VHF Society, which I'm a member of, uh, has become the largest amateur radio organization in the state of Utah. Meanwhile, the AWRL Utah section has suffered. The details get lost in the weeds, so to speak, when you operate them like they're one organization. For example, on the AWRL website, our section webpage, consisted of an email from Mr. Parks to the membership of the Utah VHF Society. The Utah VHF Society is not an AWRL affiliated club. It speaks to them being run as one organization. For example, the Ogden Club was being recognized on the AWRL main page for reaching a 100 year mark as a club, but nothing on our section web page. On page 13 of this month's QST is a full page article showcasing one of our own hams, but nothing on our section web page. This past Sunday was World Amateur Radio Day, but nothing about it on our section web page. That also includes our section Facebook page that hasn't been updated in a long time. In fact, the largest club in the state posted its newsletter to the Colorado Facebook page, but not ours. We are not doing what is needed to provide value to our membership. You know, I'm a Navy veteran and I was in the P3 squadron that searched for submarines. Uh, one thing I know, you can't pilot two planes. The same is true here, you can't serve two masters. This election is not about Mr. Parks or myself. It is about creating and providing value to new and existing hams and clubs. As section manager, Mel has responsibility to serve more than 1800 members, not to mention over 18,000 licensed hams in Utah. Can we really expect someone to be able to serve both equally well? Forgive the trite phase, if you build it, they will come. That is what I did as emergency coordinator for AWRL Salt Lake County Aries, growing the organization from approximately 85 to 250 in 18 months with the necessary leadership, training and structure. Creating value attracted hands across the county. Uh, similar growth can happen with our section. Let's compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. Out of all the sections in the US, Colorado is the closest to our size. They have six assistant section managers, we have one. Let's give a voice to all, not just the Wasatch Front. They have affiliated club coordinator, we do not have one. That being said, I feel strongly enough about supporting our clubs that I would make that responsibility an assistant section manager position. Colorado has 50% more AWRL members. I believe it is because they see more value in what their section has to offer. 
there is a lot more that can be done to bring value to our section. Again, this is not about Mel and myself, but creating value for our section. If you can't fly two planes and you can't serve two masters. I'm retired, I don't have any conflicts of interest. My passion for strengthening our hobby and willingness to spend the necessary time and effort to build our organization, benefit new and existing hams and clubs. Let's make this a win-win and two successful organizations instead of one. I'm asking for your vote to give me the opportunity to serve Utah's AWRL membership and greater ham community by creating a thriving statewide AWRL organization focused on providing service to both new and existing hams as well as affiliated clubs. Thank you. All right, thank you, Pat. And Mel, if you would unmute yourself and Pat, if you would mute yourself, uh, we'll give Mel some time. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, I've really enjoyed the opportunity to serve and I believe that's what uh, Ham Radio is all about is serving the amateur radio community in any way and every way you can. I enjoy the opportunity to serve in many diverse different activities and different functions. Uh, under my uh, direction as the ARL section manager, our membership has consistently grown every year for the last 20 years. We've only had two specific times where we had a drop in membership. At the beginning of my section manager term, when I first started, our membership was only at 957 members. Today, our membership is at 1,998 members. That represents a significant growth of approximately 50 new members a year. Only once during that tenure have we had a drop in membership, and that happened in 1916 when ARL raised the membership dues by $10. Uh, prior to the uh, raise of dues, we had 110 new members in one month. That was a significant growth that we've never experienced before. The following year, we had a drop of 61 members, but still showed a positive growth overall. Uh, we have uh, about 10% of our hams in Utah are ARL members. That's a lot lower than other states, but you have to take into consideration some of the significant uh, differences about our section over many of the others. We have a unique group that does a very good service to the uh, LDS church, but they do not have an overwhelming desire to affiliate with ARL. And that drops our membership total of hams in Utah that are actually active, probably by about 25 to 30%. So the numbers can be distorted and proven any way you wish if you feel like you want to say that we're declining in membership or not growing. But at present, our section has the uh, fastest growing of many sections. Only one or two are faster growing than our section. And this has been recognized by the ARL Board of Directors and also many of the division directors that have talked to me about what are we doing to help grow our membership. And we've done an excellent job doing that. I do feel another key point that anybody who wants to step into the leadership position of the ARL section manager should come to the table with some leadership experience in ham radio. And I mean elected leadership position, not just an appointment. Uh, I've had the opportunity to serve as the president of the Davis County Amateur Radio Club on two separate terms. I'm also elected as the Utah State Mars Director for two successful terms. And again, I am the president of the Utah VHF Society. And although Pat feels that uh, divides my responsibilities and attention, I don't think it does. I think it contributes to the growth of ham radio in the state of Utah. We've had many people in the Utah VHF Society join the uh, ARL and we are on the verge of uh, affiliating because we've reached the 51% mark of uh, ARL members in the Utah VHF Society. I've uh, also ensured that uh, we've done a lot to increase our field organization. We have 47 ARL appointees in the ARL section at the present time. Many of those are not listed because of the nature of the calling that they have or the appointment that they've been given, but we have a very active and viable uh, section traffic manager, and he does a great job with our section traffic net. We also have a very good 
uh, program under the ARIES program. Uh, we only have 15 ECs appointed in our state for 29 counties, but some of our ECs do serve in dual roles serving two counties or more. We can definitely do more to recruit more ECs over time. I would just like to say that I really feel strongly that uh, the work I've done as the section manager is uh, had a great impact on the growth of our section and the recognition of our section. All of the sections in our division have used our section as a pattern over which they've used to develop their division conventions because they recognize how successful we've been in having division conventions. And we have had the most successful division conventions over many of the other sections. I really appreciate the opportunity to serve and my goal and desire is to continue serving in the same capacity that I have and reach out to many more if I can to help them get involved with the ARL program. Thank you very much for this opportunity and I appreciate your time. Thanks, Mel. If you would uh, mute yourself, please. And Pat, do you have any comments about what was just said? I'm just going to let it stand. Okay. But thank you. Uh, so the first question is, um, what resources can the Utah section manager bring to affiliated clubs to help with membership recruitment and programming? And Pat, we'll start with you again. Well, it's uh, one thing I found is when you put in the infrastructure of leadership and training, um, that attracts a lot of people. I know it's Salt Lake County Aries. We divided our meetings up into half training. And then we brought somebody in from the outside for a presentation. That being said, um, that not only did the internal things that needed to be done, but it also provided us to build relationships externally. And uh, so the value that created attracted uh, a lot of hams in the county. Um, so with the, uh, the clubs, I think uh, providing somebody, and, and I believe me, there are people that are waiting for the opportunity to assist these clubs, but uh, appointing somebody to that position that can spend full time in creating value for these clubs and also an, a mechanism where the clubs can come together um, using Zoom or whatever, but share ideas, you know, let each other know what works and what doesn't. Uh, I don't believe that one man has all the answers. Okay, how about recruitment? And as far as recruitment, again, if you provide the value, that just naturally is a byproduct of what you're doing. So word of mouth, hey, guess what our club is doing? Um, it's just a natural byproduct. Okay. If you'd be kind enough to mute yourself, we'll uh, ask that same question to Mel. What resources can the Utah section manager bring to affiliated clubs to help with membership, recruitment, and programming? As the section manager, uh, there's an excellent set of tools that you can provide to any uh, club or group of AM radio operators, whether it's an affiliated club or not. And uh, many of these items are uh, available in the way of training materials and brochures, and also in assisting the club if they're affiliated with uh, taking advantage of the uh, ARL uh, reimbursement program where a club can benefit from uh, recruiting ARL members by $15 for every new uh, ARL member that is brought into the ARL uh, membership roster. Uh, clubs have taken advantage of this and I've done a lot to help that. Many clubs aren't aware of the benefit that they can have for that. And I'm spreading that word to the, the many of the clubs. I've done that consistently over the years. And I found that it's really contributed a lot to helping clubs increase their club membership and also the ARL membership. Uh, in recruitment of hams, uh, one of the things I found that's been working very well, and I've uh, not been instrumental in doing it myself, but I've uh, seen other clubs do it, and I share it with the other clubs I visit, is many clubs have now started a very good recruitment program where uh, they attend a VE session, and uh, at the VE session, the club officials 
uh, make a contact with that ham, assign that ham an Elmer and get him on board with getting on the air and taking advantage of the benefits of being a ham radio operator right off the bat. And this gets them involved with a club and gets them the opportunity to see the other organizations and entities that they can belong to as a ham radio operator. Thank you. Okay. Um, Pat, in your opinion, what is the biggest issue facing Utah hams this year and what is your plan to address it? Well, the uh, biggest issue with the COVID-19 is being able to uh, continue as, as a club or an organization. Um, fortunately, most disasters, we can learn lessons from it. And in this one, we learned we can use a technology like Zoom to overcome some of those challenges. Now, that being said, I think we can also use the same technology to overcome the logistics of being such a large uh, area as Utah. So let's, let's include not just the Wasatch Front, but you know whether it's uh, Washington County or up by Logan, uh, Cache County, we can use technology to bring things closer together. Let's have meetings that include everybody um, and not be uh, confined to the uh, geography of the physical ability of, to get someone somewhere or not. So I see uh, opportunities there and we need to take advantage of that and use it. Okay, thank you. Mel. What is the, go ahead and so ask the question. What is the biggest issue uh, facing Utah hams this year and what is your plan to address it? Uh, one of the, of course, all of us being restricted uh, in where we can be and meeting in large groups has uh, had a very big challenge in uh, trying to get uh, our clubs and hams together. I've been very impressed and have been able to attend and participate in many of the club activities that have used Zoom, just like Pat has mentioned. One thing I've found that's really interesting, I've had more interesting conversations on the air with different Utah hams than I've ever had. Uh, I guess being on the air has been a real significant thing. And I think that has been one of the great advantages of the COVID uh, situation. We've all had the opportunity to participate more in doing what we enjoy, being on the air and interacting with each other and learning from each other as we participate on the air. Many uh, of the things that we've learned during COVID, I think we can carry through down the road. I know many clubs were toying with the idea before COVID hit to share their club meetings with some members who were homebound or couldn't make it to club meetings. I think many clubs down the road in the future will make their club meetings available to any and all who would like to attend via Zoom or another uh, inter, you know, media resource. So I think that we've got a lot of great opportunities down the road to enhance our ham radio participation through the new technologies and different things we're using that are a result of the experience we're having with COVID. Okay. Pat, any comment on that? Well, you know, I, I can see the benefit to doing uh, on the air, but I think we're limited to some extent. Um, whereas if we use Zoom, we can have all the club presidents in the state uh, come together and as a council and work on common goals and such and overcome that geographic uh, issues. Um, that being also said, what about section leadership? Um, I don't know if, uh, I'm not aware of any current meetings that Mel has with section leadership, but why don't we have uh, internal meetings with all of the section leadership? So again, we're, we're all on the same page. We're all working on the same goals. Um, so I see Zoom uh, as an opportunity to overcome some of those challenges. Thank you. Mel, any comment on that? Yes, uh, we do already use Zoom for some of our section activities. Uh, my uh, new SEC that we appointed just a while ago has been having uh, uh, monthly meetings with all of his ECs throughout the state and the ASECs that we have. And he's done an excellent job doing that. And that has carried over into some other areas where I've had some uh, Zoom meetings with other section leaders who I was not able to meet with personally. 
now that we're coming out of COVID, I can see the value of continuing that because it gives us the opportunity to use Zoom wherever possible. And the only point I was trying to make with uh, on the air is as ham radio operators, we all have a great opportunity to become more experienced at using what we want to do the most, being on the air and using the radio and in helping others. I've had some of the greatest experiences during COVID to help brand new people as an Elmer get on the air for the first time by using Zoom and walking them through how to use their radio and get on the air. So Zoom is a great uh, product. Some of the new technologies that are available are really enhancing our ability to be more effective as ham radio operators and leaders in ARL. Okay. Who is your new SEC? Tyler Griffiths. It's Tyler Griffiths up in Logan. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, let's move on. Um, staffing was a, um, um, a question and a concern um, and a great way to get people involved. But Pat, what would you do to get um, the younger generation involved? Well, I, you know, I think of, uh, oh, I just came in, in fact, I have it right here. Just came in from uh, the UVARC area. And here's a young lady, you can't see it with the, but here's a young ham that just uh, got her license with some others. And uh, I think it's a question of looking at who's having success. Let's meet together. Let's learn what you're doing. Let's duplicate that and uh, learn from it. I think we can take advantage, not just by, again, from one person having answers, but let's see the multiple ways that people are having success and let's meet together and learn from that and take it and spread it out. So how would you, how would you discover who's having that success? Well, I think just, uh, again, if we have the proper leadership who's, who's uh, working with the clubs and other organizations, then they'll know about uh, evidences of things like this. And by all means, we can, invite them to participate, whether it's internal meetings, external meetings, or whatever, but we, we need to learn from one another on what works and what doesn't. Okay, thank you. Mel, any ideas on how to recruit the younger generation? Yes, I had a very good experience with that just last Saturday. I attended the Ogden Amateur Radio Club meeting at the Utah Military Academy. And uh, after the meeting, I had a very great opportunity to meet with their commander, uh, and we had a long discussion about their group there, and they're setting up a amateur radio club for all their young people between the ages of 14 and 18 that attend their uh, facility. And in interacting with him, I also found out he had a great desire to get more involved with some of the uh, other institutions of higher learning and I've set up an uh, opportunity for many of their students to visit the University of Utah at the appropriate time so that they can see what we're doing there and participate with some of the ham radio operators that we have in the engineering program at the University of Utah. I think there's a great many great opportunities that we can take advantage of especially with our young people in the uh, high school and junior high schools. These are the most common ages that are interested in getting into ham radio. And many of these young people are interested in the STEM program, which is a great program to get young people involved in technology and ham radio goes hand in hand with the STEM program. So I think getting young people involved at the uh, school levels is a great way to recruit more people into the ham radio program. And how would you do that? Uh, we could easily do that by setting up uh, contacts at each of the uh, local high schools and junior high schools. Uh, I know the Davis area have already done that with a few people and it had uh, varying degrees of success. Uh, we are being very challenged with getting young people into ham radio because they all have this radio that they call a cell phone and they don't realize they're already doing ham radio. They just don't realize what it's about. So I think a lot of young people just need opportunities to understand radio and get involved. And it's interesting to see how some of the young people, when we appoint people to work with them, like Elmers, that they actually get a great 
insight into what ham radio can do and what they can do with ham radio. Another area that I feel is very beneficial, uh, we have a lot of scholarship programs available to amateur radio operators that are under the age of 18 that can contribute to their college level experience. Thank you. Um, so this is a question for you, Mel. Um, what are the kinds of services you can provide members of uh, our club um, when they, what kind of problems you can solve for them? What kinds of um, league to club challenges they might have? What, what kind of services can you provide the members? One of the most satisfying experiences I've had as a section manager, and it's really something that's not really clearly outlined for a section manager to do, but I've had numerous cases of assisting our amateur radio operators to recover or renew their license. Many hams, whether they're a member of ARL or not, find it very challenging to get on the, AR, the FCC website and renew their license. And ARL will allow any ham to go through the uh, ARL site to get their license renewed. On multiple occasions, I've had hams come to me and said, I didn't realize it, but my license expired a year ago. And they have no clue what to do to help get that resolved. And it's been a very easy fix where I get with them and refer them to the ARL VE office and they actually take the ball and get it done. And within a few days, their license has been renewed. The most extreme case that I had to deal with, we had a handicapped ham that was blind and she uh, let her license lapse for two and a half years and didn't realize that it had lapsed. And she had been checking into the beehive net every day. Uh, when she found out, her and her husband came to me and said, what can we do? And of course, there is a way for a person who's had an extra class license to get that restored by just taking the technician class license exam, which she did. And then unfortunately, she lost her call sign. So ARL assisted her with a request to get her old license restored through a vanity request. And these are kind of things where I think hams really appreciate the extra effort an individual can make, like myself as a section manager, but anybody could do it. And the other area I've really liked is I, I really enjoy tutoring and helping new hams get things worked out. I've had many hams ask me about getting an antenna put up or a tower put up. And uh, I've often gone to bat for them with their city council or their county uh, commissioners to help them get the uh, ordinance issues resolved to uh, apply for a tower application and get it properly done. So that's some of the ways I would reach out and help hams that uh, are in a club or a group that need help. As long as we're going here and you're making that list and it's a long list, I guess the polite question is, um, how do you find time to do all the stuff that you do? I mean, you are spread, spread thin. I am spread very thin, but one of the fun. things that I've done that's been very effective, the areas that I feel need the most attention in the ham radio, I've focused on making sure I have excellent appointees in those areas. And uh, I found that the biggest program that we have in the state of Utah that needs the most attention is our emergency program under the ARIES program. And uh, I've got an excellent team that's always worked well with that. Even Pat recognized that uh, during the time he served as an EC, he was able to contribute to the program by putting an effort into doing that. And, you know, I found the thing I do the most is I budget my time because I, I, I work full time. I also have commitments to a, not only the section manager position, but I, I am the president of the Utah VHF Society. That society only meets once a year, one meeting a year. And the other activity that takes a bit of my time is we have to publish a, a booklet that takes some time, but I have other people that totally do all the work to get that done. All I have to do is pick up the books and deliver them to be mailed. And in other areas where I spend a lot of my time, 
Uh, I really enjoy working with uh, new hams. And I, I, the other thing is, as a member of the Davis County Amateur Radio Club, I have a fun calling that I just love doing. It's an appointment, but I work in the Davis County Bookstore. And I really enjoy helping hams who are trying to decide what they need to help educate themselves better. And uh, I find just budgeting my time for the different things. Usually during a given year, I try to visit every club in the state. I haven't been able to do that every year. At field day, I try to visit at least a half a dozen uh, website, I mean, field day sites where the field days are going on. And I just focus my time on that. Uh, I guess I would hope if uh, anybody were to step into my shoes, they would be willing to put in at least as much time as I do to make the job successful. So you mentioned an SEC, an SEC team. Who are they? Basically, I have uh, four people. I've got my section emergency coordinator, which is Tyler Griffiths. I've got Kelly Weldon, who is an SEC over our programs. I've got Steve Snow, who is an educational. No, it's uh, he's an assistant SEC to fill in when Tyler can't function as the EC. And then I have uh, Steve um, Gary Davis, uh, uh, who was the EC in Davis County, who is functioning in the educational role as my EC. Those four people cover all the areas we need to cover in training our ECs and getting our ARIES program going. We are looking at uh, developing some really unique uh, training opportunities for all of our ARIES members, where with the new ideas of using Zoom, we're hoping to come out with once or twice a year uh, a Zoom meeting open to all of our uh, ARIES members that they can come in and get training at uh, a Zoom meeting, because many of them have a long way to travel for the meeting we have. And of course, a non-related uh, ARIES uh, program is the RACES program, which is not has, has no connection at all to the ARL program. It's a state-run program run by the state, but we've had a, a very excellent working relationship with the state, and they've had a cooperative effort to allow us to have a joint RACES slash ARIES workshop with the primary focus on RACES issues. Thank you. Pat, you have, uh, um, Mel has obviously been around for a long time and is pretty well connected, um, but you have concerns about him being uh, spread thin and um, maybe not responding as quickly as he could or um, not having uh, a big enough team or what? what's your comment on that? Well, I don't question that Mel's experiences. I think they're uh, excellent experiences, but at the same time, um, he's talking about uh, our membership growing 50 people a year. Um, I think if we had the proper, not just supportive staff, but primary staff um, uh, appointed, that we could accomplish a lot more. We could uh, grow our AWRL mem membership a lot more. I'm not, uh, I don't accept the idea that because of a certain local uh, paradigm in terms of uh, hams and, and becoming uh, members of uh, the membership at large in terms of a licensed ham, but I would rather go for the attitude that uh, this is not um, something that's just a, a tacit effort, but I think if we provide value that people will join. Um, I think if we provide the proper staffing um, that people will be, have the support they need and be able to grow our numbers uh, much more significant than what they are. So what do you see the um, uh, section manager's relationship being with the president of the VHF Society if you were elected? Well, I think, uh, well, for, you know, personally, if I was the uh, section manager, I would suggest to Mel that I think if he just converts... Uh, seven or eight people over to AWRL members, he'll be an AWRL affiliated club. Um, it wouldn't take that much effort, but uh, it could easily be done. I would encourage him to become an AWRL affiliated club um, and come under the umbrella of other AWRL affiliated clubs. Okay. 
how would you see um, the VHF society benefiting from having those um, two positions separate? Well, again, I, I think if we look at, and I gave the example of just the uh, section webpage on the AWRL website. And uh, to me, that gives uh, indication that Mel's spread pretty thin. He talks about volunteering uh, uh, different organizations, doing other jobs also. Um, I can appreciate that and those are good things, but um, I think AWRL should have the priority over uh, other things. Okay, I think we're done. Uh, I haven't received any other um, um, questions as we've been going along. So I guess you've been answering them or we've been doing what we need to be doing. Um, um, Mel, if you would like to um, sum up, get in your last shot. Anything you would like to say? I just want to say that uh, for those who know me, they know how much I'm dedicated to serving in the uh, capacity as a section manager. They've seen my performance. They understand what I do and what I bring to the table. And uh, I think Pat has some good ideas and good suggestions. Uh, certainly, if I'm elected, I do want to take advantage of some of those ideas and suggestions. And uh, I, I have uh, done a lot that uh, I can down as uh, these are successful things I've done. But at the same time, I, I am very, very open to looking at new and more effective ways to serve and to uh, enhance our ARL membership and also grow the ha ham radio community. So I just want to say I will continue to serve if reelected. And I want to let everybody know that I plan to do an excellent job if I am reelected. Thank you very much. And Mel, we appreciate your efforts and the time that you spend and uh, uh, want to make sure that you're aware of that. And we thank you for being with us tonight. Pat, you're the, you're the newcomer. You're the, the, the challenger. Um, you get the last word. Great. Thank you. Unless um, you say something that Mel wants to dispute. <laughs> no problem. Um, you know, I look at the current uh, circumstances of things. When I think of the, uh, the web pages, the staffing and, and other uh, things, I, my question is why hasn't, why now, why not before, why hasn't been done? Why do we have to have this opportunity as a catalyst to suggest those items? Um, Mel's been in 22 years. Uh, so why now? Why, why hasn't been done before? And that's pretty much my, uh, bone to pick, to pick so okay well we appreciate your efforts here and uh, and to stir things up and get things uh considered we appreciate your suggestions and hope that one way or another they'll either as you with the section manager or uh with you as somebody as a member of the club and helping that those will get implemented we, we appreciate your willingness it's not um easy to go up against somebody who's been there for a long time so we appreciate your efforts and, uh, and we appreciate both of you for keeping it very civil. And, um, and uh, we wish you both well, and we hope that our membership will consider carefully their votes and get them in. I think we have a deadline coming up in a week. I'm sorry, Mel, you have to unmute. 14 May is the deadline for the ballots to be received at ARL headquarters. I would encourage everybody who really intends to vote to mail in their ballots at least a week before. So shoot to get your ballots mailed between the 1st and the 7th of May if you haven't already done so. Great. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, um, have a good evening. We Thank you very much. Thank really you, appreciate your time. You bet. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Mel. You bet. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. You bet. Thank